Hi everybody, welcome to 101 Guitar Lessons. My name is Lorne and this is my daughter Dylan. Say hi Dylan. Hi. How old are you Dylan? Eight. Get to think about it? <laughs> so Dylan wanted to learn how to play the guitar and I thought this was a great opportunity to show everyone that if my eight-year-old daughter, who is amazing, uh, can learn to play the guitar, so can everybody else, no matter what age you are. Okay? So Dylan, have you ever had a real guitar lesson before? No, we've kind of fiddled a, a little bit here and there over the years, but never really done anything serious, right? So you don't really know how to play any chords or any scales or songs. So we're basically starting from zero. Okay. Well, one thing I've taught Dylan is how to hold the pick. So we know that we put your first finger out. Do it. <laughs> Curve your first finger in and put the base of the pick against your knuckle and the tip of your finger and then close it up. Yep, and that's how you hold the pick, okay? Like that. So, one thing we're gonna do to get started is we're gonna warm up, okay? Make sure that our right hand, our picking hand, is all good and coordinated. So we're gonna start on the sixth string. This is the low E string, the sixth string, right? So we know that this is the sixth string, the fifth string, the fourth string, the third string, second string, and the first string, right? Six, five, four, three, two, one. So if I say play the sixth string, you're gonna play like that, right? Go ahead. Awesome. If I say play the first string, you're gonna play this. Play the first string. Cool. Now, what if I said play the third string? That would be this one, right? Oh, that's the fourth string. <laughs> All right, so the thing that's a little bit confusing is that some people think this is the first string because it's the closest one to you, right? But no, this is the first string, so it's one, two, three. Okay, play the third string. Good, now tuck your hair behind the guitar because you're gonna mute the strings that way. Okay, awesome. Now, go ahead and play the fifth string for me. All right, so now we've established we know what the numbers are, right? All right, play me the fourth string. Cool. So that's a way that you can quiz yourself just to get started and familiar with where the strings are. Now, these strings also have a name, right? They have a letter name. There are only seven alphabetic letters okay, in Western music. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You definitely know your alphabet and you definitely know it up to G, right? So say it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Awesome. Now there's sharps and flats in between there. We're not going to worry about that right now. All we're going to do is learn the names of the strings. So we know the numbers, right? Sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, third string, second string, first string. But if I said play me the B string, you wouldn't know what to do, right? Right. Right. Okay. So this is how it works. The low E string is, the low sixth string is E. So it's, we're going to call this the low E string because it sounds very low. Right? So pl play the low E string. Okay, so what's the name of that string? Low E. Right, what's the number? Six. Perfect. So the next string is the fifth string. And that's the A. Play the fifth string. Perfect. Now we're going to play the fourth string. And what, what string was the fifth string? That was... Um. Yeah, perfect. Go ahead. So we had, so far we had E and A, right? Low E and A. Just do that for me. Low E, A, and say it as you play it. Low E, A. Awesome. Right, and what you did was perfect. You muted the strings, so just touch them lightly to mute the strings in between and that'll kill the sound. Perfect. So now we've got the fourth string, which is D for Dylan. What's the name of that string? D. So it's important that you say it and you look at it at the same time, okay? Because when you look at something and you say it, it helps reinforce that you know that, okay? So, so far we have three strings down. We have the low E, the A, and the D. Can you do that for me? Say it and play it. Low E, A, and D. Awesome. So now we're going on to the third string, which is the G string. Say and play. I can't remember. <laughs> it's the G string. G. All right, so say it again. G. G. All right, good. So, so far we have E, A, D, G. Can you remember all those? E, A, D, G? 
Go for it. Awesome. Now we've got two left. So the second string is the B string. So B, play it. B. All right, so we're gonna do all five of those. Low E, A, D, G, B. Go ahead. Low E, A, D, G, B. Perfect. And the first one is gonna be super easy. It's E, or the high E. Play and say. High E. Good. Now why is this called the high E and this one called the low E? Because the tune's high for the high E and uh, low, e, uh, low E is because the tune's low. That's right. Exactly. The note is very low sounding. Even though it's higher above the ground, we're thinking about how it sounds because we're talking about music here, right? And that's the important thing. So right now we know the names of the strings. A really good way to really remember them is to practice them with some sort of rhyme, right? So I'll give you two different rhymes and you can choose which one you want, okay? So we've got um, every adult dog growls, barks, and eats. All right? So every adult dog growls, barks, and eats. That's E, A, D, G, B, E. What was the rhyme? Every adult dog growls, growls barks, barks, and eats. eats. Right. The and is like a little silent and. Now, um, the other way is to do it this way. That's everybody goes down and eats. It always has to do with eating for some reason. Because <laughs> I like food and you could admit that I like food, right? Yeah. yeah, I like food. Okay, so everybody goes down and eats. Try that one. Everybody goes... Well, say it and play it while you do it. So, every... Everybody goes down and eats. Awesome. Good way to remember the names of the notes and the strings? Cool. So, now we've got that down. So, what I'd like you to do is on the first string... You know what? Let's try it on the sixth string. Let's be a little bit challenging. On the sixth string, remember how we hold the guitar? We kind of hold our thumb up like, cool, dude. Do it. Right. And you put that on the back of the neck and then you're gonna wrap your fingers around, right? Now, when we wrap our fingers around, we've got some space in between the neck itself and our hand. Our hand isn't on the neck if we can help it, okay? And we've got our fingers nice and curved the whole time. And our thumb is kind of in line with our second finger, in and around second, second, and third finger. So, what we've got here is I want you to play the first fret of the sixth string with a downstroke. Awesome. Now, second finger is going to go on the second fret and you're going to play an upstroke. Great. Third finger on the third fret and you're going to play a downstroke. Really good. Fourth finger on the fourth fret and you're going to play an up. Awesome. So this is just a really easy spider, we call it a spider exercise or finger exercise where we're just playing one finger per fret. First finger on the first fret, second finger on the second fret, third finger on the third fret, and fourth finger on the fourth fret, okay? So, the other thing that we have to remember is with our picking hand, we're gonna use alternate strokes. Just like we, when we walk around, we use alternate feet, like right, left, right, left. We're gonna use alternate strokes, so down, up, down, up. Never two downs or two ups in a row. Like when you're walking, you never go right, left, right, 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 left, right, left, 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 right, left. That would be weird. You'd end up falling on your face, right? So. When you're picking, same thing is true. Always alternate picking right now. Down, up, down, up. Okay? So that would be down on the one, up on the two, down on the three, up on the four. Make sense? You try. Awesome. Now what I want you to try to do is do the same thing on the next string. So on the A string or the fifth string, same, same. We're going to try first finger, first fret, down. Second finger, second fret, up. Third finger, third fret, down. Fourth finger, fourth fret, up. Okay? So down, up, down, up. Don't worry about timing so much. Just concentrate on trying to get a clear, clean sound. Not so much buzzing, right? And so far you're doing great. So go ahead on the fifth string.
Perfect. Let's do it on the fourth string. Perfect. Keep going. Third string. Perfect. Now keep going on the rest of the strings. Great. And the first string. Good. Let's do that last note again. Make sure you're not hitting more than one string at a time rather than... Okay, try it again. Just the upstroke on the fourth. Fourth finger, fourth fret. Good. All right, so that was excellent. What I would like to do is talk about two different ways that you can use your picking hand. All right, now you were doing the floating method, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Both ways are completely legitimate. But if you look at my right hand here, here I'm going to float. And I'm just going to pick by floating. It's kind of a little bit hard to control where my hand's going and being consistent with it. But lots of players play that way. I like to use my pinky as an anchor. So I'll stick my pinky out and put it on the body of the guitar somewhere. And it can move around. It doesn't matter. It just keeps my hand from floating away from the body. So that I can have a little bit more control if I'm picking on one particular string. Make sense? So try the anchor method. Try with your pinky down on, on the body, see how that feels. Let's just do that on the first string. Don't worry about touching anything with your left hand. And I'll try without it and do it without it. What feels more secure for you? Uh, Not sure? Not sure. Okay, well, experiment with both until you figure it out. But if you feel like you're hitting the wrong string by accident sometimes, then use your pinky as an anchor. Cool? Cool. Cool. All right, so now we're going to try to play some very simple power chords. Okay? And really, these are just one finger chords. And we're going to incorporate a second finger soon. But this is just one finger chords. And we're going to play um, a very simple kind of blues song. Okay? All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna learn the E power chord and we're gonna put our first finger on the fifth string second fret. Yeah, now we're gonna be playing two strings at the same time here. So we're playing the sixth string open. So that means when I say open, we're not touching it. See, I was just ringing out without me touching it. So it's open. Go ahead and pick the sixth string. And then the fifth string with your second finger on the second fret, or first finger on the second fret, sorry. Okay, so now try to play them together. Good. That's a power chord. And if you just played this, so go one, two, three, four, like that. Awesome. We're going to do the same thing for the A power chord. So our first finger really just has to move over one string. So our first finger is going to be on the fourth string on the second fret. And then we're playing the fifth string open. Try that. Same time, yeah. Perfect. Now, for the third chord, super simple. Do the same thing. Move it over one string, and we're going to play the fourth string open, and our first finger is going to be playing on the third string, second fret. That's the D. So notice it's taking on the name of the open note. The open string is the open A string, and, or sorry, <laughs> open E string, and this is the E power chord, right? The next one is the open A string, and that's the A power chord. What's this string? G? No, D. D, right. You should remember that one, D for Dylan, right? So, that's the D power chord. So now we've learned three power chords, and we can learn a song with three chords, cool? All right, so let's learn a basic blues song. I'm gonna put up uh, a very basic chord chart to follow. Um, what that means is, when you see 
there are bars of music and in every bar we're going to strum four times okay so that's a very basic simple example now we're going to put it in the form of an actual blues song it's going to be an a blues okay because the a blues contains three chords which are a d and e which we know all three of those power chords right right yeah, yeah. you sure <laughs> all right show everybody your missing tooth <laughs> no, she just pulled it out last night. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and play one bar of A right now. This is the A blues. I'll play through the whole thing once, actually, so that you hear what it sounds like, and then we'll play through it bit by bit. Cool? Cool. Okay, so, and when I'm counting, I'm counting one and two and three and four, and I'm always strumming down on the number, right? And my hand is kind of moving up on the hand, so watch. One and two. to strum the first chord once as like a little ending. Sound cool? You ready? I don't know. <laughs> I think you are. So let's try it. Actually what I'll do for you is I'll write down what it looks like on a piece of paper so that you can follow and everybody out there will see it on the screen to follow along. Okay Dylan, remember how to play the A? Show me how to play the A. You have the A string open and then you're playing the next string on the second fret right Beneath it. Okay, how do you play the D? You just move it one over. Right, but make sure you're playing it together, not one after the other. Good, that's okay. And then the E. That's the low E. So, yep, stay on the second fret. Yeah. Good. So, you have the sheet right in front of you, yeah? I want you to try to follow along. We'll do it together. So, I'll say the first chord for everyone. A and two and three and four. And so get ready. We're going to start on the A. One more. You want the A to be open, right? Second fret. Yeah. Okay, Dylan, I'd like you to try to read through it and we'll play it together, okay? All right, from the A, watch the piece of paper and follow along. Four strums for every bar. Two, three, go. A, two, three, four. Now what? D? Yeah. Good. Now what? A. that again. So how many bars of A do we have there? Two? Yeah. All right. So why don't we start it from the beginning and do it again, okay? I want you to do it by yourself. I won't even interfere this time. I want you to play the whole song by yourself, okay? Go ahead. Okay. Now, when it, I'm just going to stop you there because it sounded like this. Because you weren't pressing hard enough on the note, right? Make sure it's nice and clear. Okay. That's good. And it's important to make these mistakes in the beginning. It's good because that's how we learn, right? All right, so from the top. And a bar 
of D. Good, and a bar of A. strumming the first chord once. And this? No, the first chord is an A. Oh. That's not an A. <laughs> that makes so cool That's nice. an A. Uh, uh, uh. That's right. This. But not two notes. You're playing a chord. <laughs> a chord is playing multiple notes at the same time, right? So strum the A chord again. That's one note. Fifth string, oh, yeah. yeah. Fifth string open, and then the fourth string, second fret. Fifth string open. That's a chord, right? Because when you're doing this, your your hand's getting a little bit unsure and not so confident, and you're playing it rather than. That's a lot stronger sounding, right? Give me five. Good. So you learned your first song in a matter of minutes. That's pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna play it up to speed to see so you can hear what it sounds like again, okay? Two, three, go. I want you to say the name to the, the chords as I play them, okay? Two, three, go. Just one, just A, and I'll strum it four times. Then, loud. A, A, first chord. It just makes it sound like, okay, done. <laughs> right? Okay, so uh, you'll hear things. That's a very basic starting way, sort of beginner way to play a blues and a song, okay? And we can play it many different ways. There's so many songs that just have these three chords in them. We can't discuss it right now because on YouTube there's some crazy copyright thing going on where even if you talk about a song, all of a sudden you have to pay for it or something. So I'm going to stay far away from that. But uh, the blues is the blues. It's a 12-bar blues and a lot of songs are even based on that. I'll play some sort of rhythm um, and you can hear... left hand is exactly the same, my right hand is a little bit more complicated with the strumming pattern that I'm doing, right? So it makes it sound a bit more interesting to get there. It sounds a little more, more interesting then, a little bit more lively once we get more comfortable with it, right? But my left hand did exactly what you did. Cool? Cool. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So let's make it a little more interesting now and take it up to the next level. What we're going to do is we're going to make it uh, a shuffle. A blues shuffle is that really typical sound. We're going to follow the same chord progression, but we're going to involve another finger now. And it's going to sound like bum, bum, bum. Pretty cool? Mm -hmm. 
All right, so it's the same chords, A, D, and E. We're gonna start with the A, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna play it twice. So one and, and one strumming. That's what it sounds like. Instead of one and two and three and four and, that's just how we counted it before, right? We're gonna play the and, so one and. So let's just try one and right now. Fifth string. Open, right? Yeah. One and. Yeah, one and. Stronger, more confident. One and. That's more rock and roll. Okay, now you're gonna put your third finger down here on the fourth string, fourth fret. Right there. Fourth string, fourth fret. It's a bit of a stretch, but you can do it. That's it. Now play that. Again, fifth string open. That's good. So it'll be like this. One and two and three and four and... Okay? Sounds complicated. It's not. So it's two, 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 two. Right? One and two and three and four and... I want you to try that. Uh, okay. So all that's happening is your third finger is staying up for the first two. So one and... It's like the A like we know it already. One and... And then it's going down for two and... Up for three and down for four and. Twice. And then up again. Lift it up again. Play it twice. Okay, so what you're doing now is you're doing nothing wrong, but you're lifting up your, your first finger, and then you're going to have to figure out where it goes again next time. Whereas if you just leave it down, you don't have to worry about it. You're just, I'm only moving one finger, right? Which finger am I moving? My third finger? Yeah. Just on the fourth string, and then up. Oh, sorry, fourth fret, and up. Fourth string, fourth fret, and then nothing. So, one, two, three. But we count it like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so just do that on one chord right now on the A. It's got like a cool shuffle feel, a good swing to it, right? Makes you want to dance a little. <laughs> okay, so try it. One and two and three and four and and you can even say that out loud to practice. You know how to count to four, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, can't, can't get my finger. I can't reach my finger to the. But you're doing it. Pretty good, <laughs> right? Okay. So now every time you go through, let's try it on the D by itself now, just to get comfortable with it. So we're moving from the A. The D. One and two and three and four and. Okay, that's one bar, right? One and two and three and four and. Try that for the D. Eh. Third finger, right? It would be very difficult to use this finger to reach all the way over there. Yeah, that's better. fifth string by accident there. <laughs> Try using your pinky to just control where you're hitting the strings there. Okay, try that now. Make sure that when we're playing the notes, we want to get as close to the fret as possible without actually touching it, right? Remember that? Okay, good. So now let's try it for the E chord. The E. 
We already know the E, right? Play the E. And what do you think we're going to do? Now you got to stay on the same string. The notes that are, are first and our third finger are going to be on the same string, right? Always. Playing notes on the same string, second fret, fourth fret, second fret, fourth fret. So technically you're doing this? Yeah, that's all you're doing, but on the same string. No, that's not the same string, is it? Can't really see the same that's string. That's it. Okay? Because you're playing the sixth string open and the fifth string for the E. What tends to have, take a break for a second. Just shake off your hand. Getting a little tired? Yeah. Yeah, we've been going for a little while. This is the last part of the lesson for today. Okay, and then we're going to pick it up again with another lesson. But um, I want to make sure, and at home, it's okay. Your fingers are going to get tired. You're just getting used to it, and that's all right. So shake it off a little every now and then. Loosen it up. Relax. Give yourself a little bit of a break. But remember that when you're playing those notes, you want to be as close to the fret as possible. Don't be on top, but just as close as possible. And sometimes, if you get tired, you'll find that it slides over the fret and it'll sound really weird. So, get as close to the fret as possible without actually touching it for all the notes that you're playing. Okay, try the E now. Right? You're starting open, right? So that's right. That's better. Stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. That's better. So if you're playing kind of far away, which is what Dylan was doing, we'll get a close-up look and I'll copy that. Oh, sorry. That little, that little, like few centimeters make a huge difference in the sound. It starts to sound out of tune as you get closer to the lower fret before. You want to get as close to the actual fret that you're playing as possible. So two, four, two, four, like second fret, fourth fret, second fret, fourth fret. Make sense? So I'm going to play through the whole thing now. You're going to read the bars as I go through them and you're going to count. So the, for the one you're going to say the letter name. So A and 2 and 3 and 4 and D and 2 and 3 and 4 and A, 2 and 3 and 4 and A and 2 and 3 and 4 and, and so on. Make sense? Okay. You're going to say it nice and loud and clear while I play it and then you're going to say it and play it by yourself. Ready? 2, 3, go. A. So just to recap what we learned today, we learned the finger exercise, right? One finger per fret, and we're alternate picking with our picking hand, yeah? Good. Now, because that this week, at your own pace, I'm playing it pretty quickly, and then you can just, you can, you know what, go backwards on the way back. Four, three, two, one, 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 one, two, three, four. sloppy but <laughs> all right I'm not worrying about timing right now just getting the coordination of your right and left hand that's gonna help strengthen your fingers so that you can stretch and do that all right so you're gonna play just this two and three and four and all right you're gonna just play the chords 
open as they are. Practice on the blues, okay? One and two. so on. And then we're going to practice the shuffle pattern, which is like we just did all the way through the blues, 12 bar blues song. Okay? Any questions? Uh, no. Can you play me a G string? Uh, you don't have to play anything with this hand. Which string is it? Which string is the G string? There it is. So let's go over again the rhymes for what the names of the strings are. This is the sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second, and first. You can either use every adult dog growls, barks, and eats, or everybody goes down and eats. What is it? Everybody goes down and eats. Again. Everybody goes down and eats. Okay, there you go. Play me the A string. Like the... Just the string. Good. All right, Dylan, tell everybody to subscribe and like and share the channel. Everyone subscribe and like and share the channel. Bye.